So we know the Thunder, they're at home, they're chilling, they're awaiting the winner of the Kings and the Pelicans. And take a look at this. Shea Gilgis Alexander has had success against both teams, but the Kings have struggled to contain the league's third leading scorer. But I think, Michael Wilbon, when you talk about the Thunder, Adrian Wojnarowski joining us on set as well, a lot of folks talk about their inexperience as a number one seed. So how far should they be favored? A first round series, a second round series? All They'll the be way? favored in a first round series, okay. but this is a real thing. In the NBA, I think more than any other professional sport, experience matters. You see young teams coming with a lot of talent, and they are going home heartbroken. Not just having lost, but usually crushed. Some seven-game situation. Look at Sacramento last year. They got game seven at home, and Steph puts 50 on them, and they are heartbroken. And it's like a hangover for, the, for most of the next year. That's what you see. The NBA is characterized by that. Oklahoma City's face it. They're just starting this process. We don't know what SGA is going to look like in the playoffs, even though he's, he was first team on my ballot easily and like the three or four in the MVP race for me easily. We don't know how he's going to handle it. Jalen Williams, who was one on my most improved ballot, how's he going to handle postseason? Chet Holmgren, terrific rookie season. But is that going to convey? You have all these questions. Lou, Gord has gar Lou Dort has guarded people magnificently. Is he going to be able to do that in the playoffs? So all these questions exist about OKC, and we start to answer them this weekend. It if Oklahoma City is going to play the Sacramento Kings, if they can survive here, get into the playoffs, if you're a Kings fan, you would hope that there's some way we can get Malik Monk back in these playoffs. One of the leading six men of the year uh, candidates this season. Uh, he's out with an MCL sprain. Essentially, for, he has not started to run yet in Sacramento, I'm told. I think the hope is, and maybe even something of a long shot, could they get Malik Monk back by a game six or a game seven. That would be the earliest. That'd be right. about a month. But they're going to be careful with Malik Monk in Sacramento. He's a free agent this summer. They want to resign him, and they want to make sure they handle this the right way with him. Right, and that's something that they could be facing if they face off against Oklahoma City in the first round. But Oklahoma City is a, a long-term team here, Stephen A. They're not a team that they necessarily put together hastily. But when you look at the rest of the West, there are some teams that fit that criteria. Which group do you think is under the most pressure? Because OKC, it feels like, is playing with a little bit of house money here. Well, it's, uh, to me, I, I look at the Clippers. I really, really do from the standpoint of Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, um, uh, uh, and, of course, James. James Harden, as I articulated, they were going to move into a new arena next season. You got a billionaire that's been clamoring for, the, for some level of success. Kawhi Leonard, by the way, and I'm going to say this again. I've been saying it for the last two days. I want to hear about him on Team USA. You know what I'm saying? You're wondering about whether he's going to be available for these players right now. You know that you know he's going to play, but still in all, he's not 100%. I don't want him playing. I, I, I don't want him. I don't want him cleaning his own damn room for crying out loud. I want him on the basketball court. Whatever it takes to have him on the basketball court, because when he's on the court, we know what a superstar he is. We know what Paul George can be. And if James Harden is what I think he should be, mm. the Clippers got a chance. You said something earlier today, right? When the Phoenix Suns traded for Bradley Beal, would it most have them right there alongside who? Denver. Oh, Denver. Yeah. Well, what happened? The expectations are not there anymore? Yeah, they're there. And when you have a big three and you're top heavy and you go all in to be top heavy, you got to get it done. We're talking about three of the most prolific, efficient scorers to ever play the game of basketball. And KD, D-Book, Bradley Beal. You have the pieces, right, to get it done. KD, two-time NBA champion, two-time finals MVP. So I'm looking at it right now. If they don't make a deep run or make it to the NBA Finals. Do we really trust KD? Do we know what KD's thinking? Do he really want to be in Phoenix? Do do D Book really want to be in Phoenix? They're the team that's under or, the most. I, I agree. They're under a lot, and they got to go through a team that is built sort of to defeat them. We're talking about offense, defense, classic matchup here with Minnesota being the best defensive team, arguably, in the league. The shiny things on the court always are Booker and Durant when they're playing together, except Anthony Edwards. He's taking that away from them in this series. My eye is going first to Anthony Edwards and his, not just the spectacular plays, but he kept that team afloat when they lost their most veteran player, Carl Anthony Towns, and they finished, they had well above 500, something like 13 and six in the game's cap missed. Anthony Edwards, what is speaking of young players and on that, that stage with that light for the first time, 
Anthony Edwards, is he going to be able to outshine Booker and Durant? That's, that's, a, that's a series really to watch. Here's why Oklahoma City is set up so well for the future. They're not going to have to do what Phoenix did, what Minnesota did. Go out and trade for a second star or a third big star. They have them on the roster right now. They've got an MVP, an SGA who's 25 years old, and then Jalen Williams, 23, Chet Holmgren, 21. They're going to just have to build around the edges. Right. And it might be, you look at that Denver team. What was yeah. their final piece? Aaron Gordon in a Gordon. trade. It might be something like that. And when Oklahoma City, whether it's next year or the year after, decides they have to go make a deal because they want somebody, they'll get whoever they want because they have more yeah. assets than anyone in the history of the NBA has accumulated. Yeah. Speaking of Denver, can I ask something, Stephen A., that I realize that this sounds a little bit nuts. Sure. The Denver Nuggets have nothing to prove. They are already champions. Okay. However, if Nikola Jokic wins a third MVP, if he wins a second finals MVP, he joins the list of Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Kareem, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, all before he turns 30 years old. That puts him in incredibly rare air. So it's not necessarily pressure, but doesn't the conversation around Nikola Jokic, is that on the line to change if those accolades... I don't think it's on the line to change because we've seen a level of consistent excellence from him that nobody questions. I often say the man can't jump onto a curb and you can't stop him. There's nothing you can do about it. I've never seen anything like it. You just can't stop him. And so when you... Usually when you see the Denver Nuggets struggling, it's almost never because of him. Right. As long as it's not because of him, he's fine. If he fell off, that would be a different matter.